All right, so here I am standing in front of my tomatoes here. These are San Marzano tomatoes. I plan on making a lot of uh, tomato sauce and canning it this year. Uh, there we have 252 plants I planted, and uh, they all made it, and I have extra too. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is what we do to care for our tomatoes. Actually, my wife has been doing this, and she's done a fantastic job, um, and my mother-in-law too. Uh, let me show you what uh, we do to our tomatoes. To just the simple, basic steps you can do to take care of your tomatoes and help keep the disease and fungus and stuff like that off your tomato plants. All right, so here are my tomatoes. The ones that they've done, they're back there. And if you can see this row right here, they are pruned from the ground up, maybe seven, eight inches up. They are all pruned. All the leaves are taken off. And that's very, very important on your tomato plants is to keep the leaves from touching the ground because if they touch the ground, they'll pick up disease and fungus and things like that. Um, and it lets more air and sunshine through, you know. Uh, there's two types of tomato plants that, that you need to be concerned about. One is determinate and one is indeterminate. The determinate ones are just as it says. They're determined to grow a certain size. Uh, height and produce fruit and then they're done. It's over with. They, the plant dies. Indeterminate, which are these here, these are my San Marzanos, uh, they are more viney and they'll just keep on growing. If you don't take care of them, they'll just take over. <laughs> they'll take over everything. And that's what they want to do right now over here as you can see. What we're going to do, they have a, a central leader more or less and then everything else branches off. They grow these suckers and these suckers will turn into basically new plants. Um, now, it all depends on what you want. Now, um, if you want more of a bushy plant, leave a few of those suckers, they'll turn into uh, more plants and they'll get more bushy as it grows. Um, but mainly you want to keep it under control. Uh, me, I don't want one single uh, liter uh, stem to grow and just produce fruit there. Uh, I want a few branches off the main central leader to grow but I don't want it to get out of control because I want one plant to come up and and have a few uh, suckers grow into new plants and come out uh, but like I said don't don't let it get under out of control uh, so that's what we're gonna do here let me show you how we um, take off the all the stems or the branches or whatever you want to call the leaves from the bottom up to about six to eight inches up as long as the leaves aren't touching the ground and then we're going to put them on the uh, trellis here connect them to the trellis so they don't fall over all right we're going to use this plant here as an example here we got leaves touching the ground all over here those have to come off so we know that basically everything from here down is going to come off so get yourself a pair of uh, pruning shears or a pair of scissors would work too and here we got suckers you see this is a this is a, like what we'd call branch here and then this is a sucker that comes right in between the main stem and this branch here of leaves as you can see right here and this is a sucker this is a sucker this is a sucker and these are all suckers right here that grow in between there now what these will turn into is a new tomato plant a new vine and it'll just keep on growing it all depends what you want um, if you want more of a bushy plant leave a few of these near the top and it'll be more bushy um, so what we're gonna do I think we're going to let's see what it looks like we'll take that off we'll take the we'll take this branch off we'll just call it and the sucker with it we'll just take that right off completely and uh, there's the branches coming off the bottom here all these off the bottom we're going to take off again here we got a branch touching the ground and a sucker I'm going to leave that sucker for a second and see how, what, how it looks here we have a branch and a sucker that's all going to come off because it's too close to the bottom I don't want it there same for here so essentially everything from about like I said six to eight inches up as long as the leaves aren't touching the ground you're fine and of course if your plants are too small don't take too many off you want to leave enough near the top uh, so it gets 
enough sunlight and you know photosynthesis and all that for the plant. Uh, th this branch here, as you can see, it's touching the ground. So I'm going to take it off. But I'm going to leave the sucker on there. You don't have to, it's up to you. Um, this plant is still fairly short. It's roughly a, maybe a foot and a half tall. I could put it up against my trellis right now, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer. I'm going to wait until it gets a little taller, and I'm going to put it up against my trellis um, to do that. So here, this is still okay, but um, that's essentially what you want to do is take all the leaves up to a certain point, and um, so it gets air. Now this, now this plant has got a lot of sunshine and air going through it. This will keep on growing up. Okay, the tomato plant right next to the one I just did, it looks like a mess also. So, again, start at the bottom, go to the main trunk, and take up all the branches coming off the bottom. Up to about six or eight inches up. Boy, if you can smell this right now, oh man, these leaves, oh, they smell fantastic. Tomato plants are, they smell really, really nice in the spring like this. Okay, so we got uh, more suckers. Now these suckers right here that I just took off, you can plant these right into the ground as deep as you want. Take these, uh, Take these off like this, plant this all the way down about up to here, and these will turn into a new plant. So it's good to know. So here, okay, this is the main stem, as you can see. And here I got a branch and it's touching the ground, so I want to take the branch off. And here was a sucker that come out of that branch. I'm going to keep that sucker on there. And this branch here, it's pretty close to the ground too, so I'm going to take that off. So now as you can see, let me see this. That's still okay. We got it all cleaned up here. Oh, got one down here, a sucker way at the bottom. Okay. All cleaned up. This is where my trellis starts here. Now it'll just start to grow out. Now if I wanted to, I can take more branches off, more suckers, um, depending how bushy I want the plant. So the pruning of your tomato plants is very, very important. Like I said, if you don't do it, air won't go through, uh, sun, sunlight won't get through, it. they'll be too clustered, and um, uh, sunshine and all that. It just can't, you know, they, they won't, the plant won't thrive. Something else very important is your soil. You have to, you have to get your soil right. You don't just need to till your soil up and make it nice and fluffy. If your soil is hard, then your soil is no good. And the only way to make it good is to put organic matter in your soil. So, as I always say in my videos, if you're a follower of my, of my channel here, uh, compost and manure. Those are the two basic ingredients. Uh, don't be afraid to put large quantities in there. It's good for your soil. Uh, so you want your native soil mixed in with compost and manure. Uh, try to get uh, um, composted wood chips, composted leaves, uh, debris from around your yard, whatever it is, as long as it's been composted down and uh, uh, made into a nice dirt looking compost, um, that's perfect. Same thing with your manure, it has to basically be composted down to look like dirt, more or less. Um, putting that into your native soil, mixing it in real good with tilling it in, um, your soil will be very nice and fluffy. Uh, so you'll have all the minerals, well most of the minerals you need uh, that comes from your native soil. The compost and manure provide uh, the organic material which provides the bacteria which is so very important because without that organic matter and without that bacteria in there, uh, it cannot feed your uh, roots very well because the bacteria is what breaks down all the minerals in your soil and feeds it to your uh, any plant basically. Uh, they have a symbiotic relationship that 
they take the, the minerals from the soil and feed it to your plants and in return the plants give the bacteria all the nutrition uh, that they need. Um, so it's, it's not as easy as just putting a seed in the ground and watering it and watching it grow. You have to take care of your plants. So what I do is I use, uh, I had my soil tested here. I'm going to put a link to that video up here um, where I had my soil tested um, and I got my uh, soil test results back and I was deficient in a lot of things and very high in other things. Uh, like iron here. My, the iron here is off the charts. That's why if you've watched my videos, my soil is red because it's still rust. <laughs> the iron all oxidized. So, um, very important you put minerals in your soil. Um, I got my test results back. I went to a place called, or I, I contacted this guy, and his name was Luke at fixmysoil.com. I showed him my test results. He put together all the minerals I needed for my soil and shipped them to me. And I've been basically broadcasting them by hand, just sprinkling it over the top and uh, working it in with a rake. And that will feed as it rains in your water. It feeds, it goes into your soil and, uh, and it feeds your plants. Um, so no more, I don't, these things are beautiful, man. I have no tomato curl, no uh, diseased leaves. They're nice and green, no fungus, no nothing on, on the leaves. Not even bugs are bothering them, which is awesome. Now, if you don't get your soil tested, uh, you can use uh, azomite. If you look at, um, if you if you go online and search for it, maybe your maybe where you live, your local hardware store, uh, nurseries, whatever, they might have azomite or something similar, where it's all uh, a, at least it's got a good profile of minerals. You know, 70 or 80 minerals that uh, uh, that it would have, and you would sprinkle that into your soil, rake it in. And then plant, uh, plant your plants or put your seeds in. That's basically what you need to do with your tomatoes is keep the bottoms pruned um, from uh, an open and air can f flow through there. Uh, make sure your soil is nice and fluffy with a lot of organic material, uh, uh, good minerals. And of course, you have to fertilize. It's very, very important that you fertilize. Uh, you know, a lot of people say it doesn't matter if you use synthetic fertilizer or organic fertilizer but uh, to me there's a difference okay uh, a lot of people say there's uh, nitrogen is nitrogen whether it's you know organic or synthetic synthetic fertilizers they they are a type of salt and if you use them too often they build up the salt in your soil and eventually it kills all the microbiology in the soil and you don't want that Okay, that's why these big farms and all that, they can't even grow nothing anymore. They have to keep dumping fertilizer on everything uh, just to get things to grow. And they have dead dirt, basically. The soil's dead. Stick with organic. Uh, that's what nature uses, and that's what works, okay? Now, if, you, if you're losing some plants and you need a quick fix, the synthetic is okay. Uh, but just don't use it long term. All right, so what I use on my tomato plants here to keep them up against the trellis is I clip them with these clips. They come in these little bags like this. And how these work is you just wrap this around your tomato trellis wire uh, and, and your stem of your tomato plant. And they just clip they just clip together like that and they won't come off. Then if you want to reuse them again, you just push this back down and it comes apart back like that. All right, these things work great. They're very inexpensive. And uh, like I said, you get bags and bags of these things when you order them. I'll put a link in the description where you can get them uh, on Amazon. And uh, I've used them here, as you can see here. In the, uh, I've, I've been using them, and they work really, really good. So I just built this grape uh, vine trellis. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to that up here. Um, so what I've done here is I put, I had some cane. We got a lot of cane growing around here. Bamboo, I should say. Um, so I, I use some of that to support my uh, little baby grapevines. But what's going to happen is once they get up to about this point, I'm going to split two branches off here. And the main central leader is going to keep on going up here and then split that off. Well, here, I'm not on this side, but it's going to split on this side. Near the middle, they're going to go both ways. Since this is near the end, this is just going to split and go up in this way. Um, I may have a little bit grow out that way, but not much. I can't. I, I have no room. 
But what I might do here is wrap this 12 gauge wire, wrap it here and bring it up to here and wrap it so I have a, a piece here where I don't have to have a cane or something to, to uh, uh, lead it up to the next wire. The wire itself will lead it up to this wire. So what I'm going to do this year is, obviously I'm not going to get no grapes this year. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on a lot of fertilizer and a lot of growth this year. I want these to really grow, strengthen up, and then next year uh, more growth again and see how far I can get these vines to grow. And uh, hopefully after that we'll start producing some grapes. Alright, so I haven't had any luck with trees uh, this year or uh, during the winter. Uh, I have to replace five or six trees now and I also lost the five trees where my grape trellis is. Uh, I just said the heck with those. I had the pomegranates and olive trees there. Um, so I planted my, I put my grapevine there and I planted my grapes there. That's fine, but I still have five or six more trees to replace. I got this one here, have another one over there. Those, these are apricot trees. I have uh, one, two, three cherry trees that I'm going to replace with something else, not cherries. Oh, he fell over. <laughs> um, and also a couple of fig trees that didn't do well. Uh, my black, oh no, yeah, my black mission, um, those died down to the roots and now they're sprouting again. And I hate that because you got to start all over again. I have my uh, Texas Blue Giant. That one also, same thing, died all the way down to the root and then sprouted again. I'm going to give that one more year. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to fertilize the heck out of it though this year. Get it nice and strong. Um, I, the two, I had two uh, figs that I ordered from Malta, the island under Sicily. Uh, there are a certain type that uh, they grow in Sicily actually. Um, they died also. I grew those from cuttings. They were doing great last year. I had a um, Violet du Bordeaux fig tree. <clears throat> that did great last year. We had dozens of figs come off of that tree. Dozens. Over the winter it died. And there it is leaning up against the uh, fence there. I replaced it with a peach tree. Peaches and nectarines do pretty good here. Nectarines better than peaches, but uh, they do pretty good. So this here is an apricot tree. They don't do well here either. At least I haven't had any luck with them. So I got these two to replace. Uh, we're going to pull this one out and put a peach tree in here that I picked up locally. I think it was tractor supply. I don't know if I can pull this out. It probably doesn't have much of a root system. It's not that old. Yeah. Yeah, she's dead. So I'm going to dig this out a little bit, amend it with some, I got a whole cart full of composted manure here and I'm uh, going to amend the soil up even more. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. The reason why they're deep, they look deep, they're really not deep. Uh, they're just in a little dish or a bowl and I need to do that because the summers here are very, very dry. So I need to water, to, when I'm watering, I need the water to stay in this area where the root system is. Um, so I can't mound them up higher, you know, it just it doesn't work here. Uh, but in the winter time we get lots of rain, so that might affect it too. So this time I'm, I'm not going to really mound it up, I'm going to keep it at ground level. But I still need to have that dish in there, or bowl, so I could water it and that water stays in that area. Because like I said here, it gets dry, it, it could be two or three months without even getting hardly any rain. Alright, so what I'm going to do... I'm going to throw in some compost and manure in there. I'm going to mix it all up and, uh, and we're going to throw some minerals in there.
we need to open this up. Now we're gonna put our uh, tree in there. All right, so this is our peach tree here. Like I said, I bought this locally. I think it was Tractor Supply. Um, give it a shot, right? Uh, this is an Alberta peach. Now my Alberta peach, I have another one that did really well. So we're gonna try it again. rough this up a little bit okay see if that's too deep that's kind of too deep so let's throw some more dirt in there let's try that a little more That looks about right. Now, what I have here is uh, it's a uh, transplant formula. It's made by Mineralized Gardens Transplant Formula. And you sprinkle this, whenever you do transplants, whether it's your vegetables or trees like this, you sprinkle, sprinkle it around the root area. So it's, all, it's a powder and you just sprinkle it around in there and that will stimulate root growth. In fact, we'll even throw some on here. Okay. Now we can throw in the uh, the dirt, well, soil. I guess we can call this soil. kind of muddy right now because like I said we had a lot of rain this morning but that's good I don't have to water this that much okay we want to make sure all that dirt is packed around the root systems That looks pretty good. And later, what I'll do is put some mulch around here. Not too much here, just a little bit, but build it up a little bit. We want to make that bowl so that water sits in there when I'm watering. Okay, the next thing I want to do is put some minerals in there and some uh, fertilizer. So I have some minerals from my from my uh, soil test. And we're gonna fertilize this and then we're just gonna work it in the soil a little bit give it a good watering and uh, and that should be good 
Um, I'm going to use, that is an all-purpose, this is mostly for your vegetables and stuff. I have some organic uh, tree fertilizer, but the, the MPK is very low. I forgot what it is, but the nitrogen is only three. Uh, this one here is 757. I prefer this, give it a good boost. Um, so, yeah, like I said, oh, this, you, again, uh, I mentioned it before, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, you can only get this at Lowe's. Um, I, can't, I can't seem to find it online or anywhere else, so they're, they're made specifically for them. But it works, works good for me. So I put my minerals on, and what this is, this is just, let me see if I can get you a close up here. It's just like granulated, or uh, little pellets is what it is really. Okay. And I think it's made from, I'm pretty sure it's like chicken manure and blood meal and, and all that wonderful stuff. Just sprinkle that around. And then kind of just work it in the soil a little bit. And now what we got to do is give this a good watering. And I'll be on to the next tree. Alright guys, so just a little, this is just a little update on what's going on here in the garden. There's always work to do. I urge you to grow your own food as much as possible. Um, we know now uh, you, you, how, our, how bad things are getting uh, since people are not working right now with this coronavirus going on. Um, things are getting pretty bad. The economy, nobody's working. and uh, Grocery stores are you know, kind of crazy. Um, so you can see how things are getting and it would be much easier on you and you'd feel much better if you had a nice garden in your backyard and you had all vegetables that you enjoy eating growing back there. So I urge you, especially those of you up north, now is the time to start getting ready um, with your gardens and I urge you to start a garden and grow your own food. Alright, so I appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.